And only when it binds does it turn on the genes that express the masculine elements that you will see, which includes pheromones. I'm just gonna be transparent with you guys. I've been grappling with this theory for quite a while now. It's actually one of the premises of my new books, which tackles male endocrinology, enhancing androgens and testosterone, all in the attempt to attract women at the level nature would have you attract them and not what society would implicate on your ability to attract a girlfriend, a wife, a life partner. So the title, not set on yet, but it's this idea, the premise is licentious behavior, sexually degenerate behavior, poisons, it dilutes, it might be a better adjective, it dilutes your natural capabilities to attract women on a subconscious level. And I'm gonna explain a theory that I have towards the latter end of this, where you can really see anecdotally how, how this affects your life, right? I, I don't, you know, I, I can give, there's scientific data in here. There's anecdotal data in here as well. But I wanna give you the reasoning, and this is my best reasoning in my personal opinion, and it's not fully fleshed out yet, but I wanted to share with you. The reasoning is important for your mind. It has to make logical sense for you to execute on what I'm about to share with you, okay? And it's imperative. This is a crucial video. So. Number one, let's get very clear and delineate between what I mean by conscious and subconscious levels of attraction. So there are two ways you can do this. Conscious attraction, this is the hard game in my personal opinion, right? So let's begin. Trappings of financial wealth will signal to somebody that you are of a certain caliber, a certain value. What are the typical trappings of success? Uh, of success, pardon me, and wealth, you gotta be a supercars, your Lamborghinis, your Bugattis, right? Branded clothing, Christian Dior Dior, uh, jewelry, big chains. You know, what are we signaling when you see an individual who is trapped, who is dressed, who is wrapped like that? They're signaling a certain caliber, a certain status, a certain demeanor, and that is not an accident. It's deliberate, yeah? You don't go out wearing Christian Dior Dior if you're not trying to impress upon others and to perhaps women in particular that you are of a certain status level. So this is conscious, and, and, and the summary for this we'll get to in just a moment, but the second is socially recognized markers of attraction. I like to call this the laundry list, right? You, you know what videos I despise? I despise what they tell you a lot about is when there are interviewers on the street, typically outside clubs, and they, 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 there's, a, there's women going by and they go, let me ask you a question. You know, what does your ideal man have to look I, like? It's, it's such, you know, double digit IQ kind of content, but it tells you a lot about it actually perfectly encapsulates this idea of conscious attraction because every single one of these NPC drones will rattle off some of the above. He has to be tall, he has to be six foot, you know, he has to be handsome. Tall, dark, and handsome is typically the, is typically the schema, right? The archetype of what a man is considered attractive. Now, it's really important because I don't want you to feel cynical or downhearted. She's supposed to say that right? She's supposed to say that. But attraction is not a rationalization, it is a feeling. I'm going to say that one more time because I, I really, when I say that, I'm, I'm not just saying it as a kind of trite, cliche, throwaway saying. I'm going to say it one more time and you really need to understand what I'm trying to convey here. Attraction is not a rationalization. It is not, you meet this criteria, therefore I am attracted to you. It is a feeling. It is a feeling. There's no reasoning there. And this is going to come into the implications that I'm going to go into in just a moment, right? Now, of course, you can get the feeling of attraction and experience conscious attraction because they've met this criteria. Of course, that can happen. I'm not saying that. 
but it's really imperative that you recognize that there are men out there like this, tall, square jaw, dark, handsome, and you talk to them and there's there's barely any... Per I've met men, I've met women, again, conventionally attractive. There's nothing there. There's nothing there. No lights on upstairs. It's so, so dull. Like that, that, That's their whole dharma is just, oh, people want to have sex with me. That's their whole personality. And, you know, if you're raised like that, of course you're not going to develop a personality. Of course you're not going to develop any kind of character because everybody's been just throwing their genitals at you. So, you know, why would you have to develop any other value in, in your personality? In this, you understand the people that I'm, I'm, I'm sure you know who they are. Okay, let's go to number three here. Sexual familiarity and preferences. This is a really interesting one. This is your own bias in a way, okay? Your past sexual partners will typically dictate what you will consciously find attractive, okay? So when I look at my previous sexual partners, there is a con, there is a, there is a pattern. There is a pattern there. It's funny. I mean, just take a moment and think about your last sexual partners. There is continuity in them. Not always. Of course, you'll get somebody who maybe is outside that, but typically there is continuity and it is typically based off who you, who was your first sexual partner and also social proximity, this word here. Very, very important. You're, if, if you know, if you if you kind of draw a circle, if you're in the middle, you draw a circle of let's say ten miles. You're only going to get access to a certain demograph, to a certain demographic of of women. But if I took you out of your home town and I threw you in Russia, I threw you in Africa, I threw you in Mexico, your preferences are going to change because of who you you get access to and you have those experiences with. You might also have a type, petite women, Latin women, you know, whatever, whatever it is. And I do believe there are ethnic preferences here. And you know, there are no racial implications here because people have preferences. People have preferences. And that is just a natural consequence of conscious attraction. So the bias here is, oh, they meet my type, which let's just take the tall, dark and handsome. They meet my type, therefore I should be attracted to them. Or um, this individual reminds me of my previous sexual partners, therefore I am attracted to them. So this, this follows, just to summarize this, I would categorize this as visual and psychological cues or biases that, that can lead to a feeling of attraction. Now let me talk about the subconscious level. And just by the way here, you would have some degree of awareness of this. Subconscious, not the case. So first one is ovulation and fertility rules. Now I'm, I'm, I'm talking both here, male and female, okay? It is widely documented and scientifically recognized if you are a woman and you are ovulating, you are fertile, they typically look for men who have high testosterone markers. And one of the biggest ones is the structure of the jaw and also scent, which is the second one here. Pheromone sensitivity, okay? Now specifically, androgens. Androgens are male sex hormones. Specifically, we can talk about androsterone and we can talk about androstenone. These specifically, there is limited research on this, and this is, an, again, an area where I'm still developing uh, to give you the best information possible. My theory is that these are male markers of virility and fertility, if you have this in abundance. And we'll get to this a little bit later. This, this part here is kind of critical because there is evidence to suggest that some men are more abundant in these androgens than others, comparative to lifestyle factors, okay? So we'll come, we'll come to that. Thirdly, charisma and energy. I didn't want to put the word energy here because I know I might lose. Well, to, to be honest, you guys can let me know. You guys are open to the esoteric. You are open to the, what's the word? The anecdotal, to the, to the value 
an individual experiences and shares a story. I mean, you're not always going to get pie charts and bar graphs and p-values. and science. science is good, but it's one half of the pie, in my personal opinion. So charisma, energy. Look, there is a distinct value here. Of course, I mean, it's, it's hard to even justify this. Of course, you're going to find an individual more attractive, predicated on the feeling that they emote in your body. There's, there's plenty of women, and I'll show you gentlemen have had this, a similar experience, that typically don't meet your criteria of visually being attractive, but you are physically attracted to them. There is an emotion of attraction inside of you. And that's the point that I'm trying to make, is that it is not, it is a feeling, it's not something that you rationalize. It's something that happens as a consequence of some of the, the, the things that I've mentioned before such as pheromones, such as scent, such as all this other information, like scent is, an, is a type of information that you are absorbing. Hearing, in some, you, you can have a very beautiful woman, conventionally, right, your type, she opens her mouth and, yeah, it's, it's um, who's that woman from Friends? I don't watch Friends, but who's that? You know the one I'm talking about, maybe, I don't know. You, you see the point, you see the point I'm trying to make here. So the summary with this is the olfactory senses. This is typically going to play a big role and does play a big role in the animal kingdom in suggesting when an animal is in heat, is in a mating season. We, we are of the animal kingdom, right? We have, we have relations there. I mean, we are more spirit, but we live in an animal. We have an animal suit, you could say. So the olfactory sense is in the nose. Yeah. This way, it's the information you feel about, not your thinking about. I, you know, you're, when, you, when you're taking in those visual cues, they're coming straight to the external part of your brain and you're interpreting it. You're going through your bias. Does this individual meet this criteria? Yes, therefore, I will be in closer proximity in order to Make this woman my girlfriend, whatever. Okay, now just a brief, brief caveat here, just a very quick one. Um, typically, I mean, this video isn't really for the genetic lottery winners because you're going to be predisposed to natural high levels of testosterone, which are going to have high levels of these androgens, and therefore you're going to be signaling to the environment that you are mating. And even if you're not, even if you're empty of those particular pheromones, then you are still conveying conscious attraction through being tall, dark, handsome, whatever the case may be. And you're not going to have issues with attraction. Individuals who aren't gifted in that respect, I think you're playing the hard, stu stupid, and potentially moronic game in trying to attract women at the level of visual cues, buying chains, flexing cars, renting cars, yeah, rent, renting a Ferrari to take a picture in it so you can put it on your Instagram. Could there be a more juvenile and sad life? No, no personal attacks here, but come on. And you know, wearing that Balenciaga or fake Balenciaga t-shirt isn't fooling anybody there. To make this better, right? Because I, I don't want this to feel like a personal attack because I've been there, by the way. You can find me wearing a chain on my Instagram in 2017, I think. Go and make fun, right? I think the personal one's there below. But how you attract a woman tells you all you need to know about her. Think about that. How you attract a woman tells you all you need to know about. If, if you're using these markers and these trappings of success in order to attract a woman, you will attract what? Superficial women. And these women are rats. If you use cheddar to attract, don't be surprised when rats turn up in abundance. They want to take, they, they are the succubus in a physical incarnation, okay? So that was just a brief one. Now, let's go into the theory. This is, this is the big bones now. The theory of subconscious attraction and how you can increase it. Now, there are known factors. There is scientific data that I have here, okay? So, number one, I'm just going to zoom in on this here, okay? So, I'm just going to go through the highlight bit. Maybe we need to go through back and forth to uh, provide more context here. But it is found that when women are ovulating, 
They are more interested in men with masculine bodies, symmetrical faces, dominant behavior, and certain body odors. That latter part is very, very important. Okay. We know, and this is an article interpretation of a scientific study. Okay. Just before anybody says. We know this. We know that women, that there is a fertility rule here. Okay. There is a force that exists in the animal kingdom that denotes individual organisms that are fertile. They signal in the environment in order to let people know that they are ready to reproduce. That is a real phenomenon. And we have not separated ourselves from that being real. Second point. Okay. I'm just going to, I'm just going to read this. This is another article interpretation of a study and I can go through the details of the study here because I've read the study for women. Nothing, nothing is like the smell of a man's sweat. Researchers at the University of California at Berkeley said women who sniffed a chemical found in men's sweat experienced elevated levels of a important hormone, along with higher sexual arousal, faster heart rate and other effects. They said the study published this week in the Journal of Neuroscience represents the first direct evidence that people secrete a scent that influences the hormones of the opposite sex. The study found uh, focused by me on what? Androstedonine considered a male chemical signal. Previous research had established that a whiff of it affected women's mood, sexual physiology, uh, arouse, arousal, and brain activation. Its impact on hormones was less clear. This is a derivative of testosterone, which is found in sweat, saliva, semen. It smells somewhat musky. It really tells us that a lot of things can be triggered by smelling sweat, uh, Claire. Wyatt, who led the study, said in an interview on uh, Wednesday. And this is another anecdotal. I know this is from Quora, okay. Um, do women find the scent of male sweat attractive? Yes, the underarms of both sexes are loaded with aprokine sweat and odor glands and the frizzy hair there, specifically designed by nature to trap and hold that scent. Pubic hair functions in the same way. On average, the noses of women are at a height level with the average man's armpit. A man's sweat contains pheromones like androsterone, androstenol, androstenone as well. These are specifically designed to broadcast to any female just how strong and healthy and dominant he is and thus a good mate. I told you, fertility rules. Here is my rational theory, okay? Women are subconsciously attracted to men with higher levels of testosterone. All roads lead back. I mean, we talk about these androgens. We can go into the nuances. We can talk about the specifics, but these are all derivatives of testosterone, especially around peak fertility times. Fertility rules. More specifically, the androgens and the androgens, uh, you know, the group of them, you can call virilization. Notice the vernacular. Notice the etymology of the words here virilization to be viral are secreted through sweat semen urine and saliva which act upon the air like what pheromones now we are transversing into perhaps more anecdotal more theory other than other than fact here so i'll just begin here nuking and nerfing of your endocrine system is one of the key barriers as to why this this system your natural system is not working so number one, androgens are produced in the testes and are mainly found in semen. Sexually licentious behavior, I've mentioned the three P's here, being out material, paying somebody to, and using other people as a means to masturbate, are blocking your ability to be able to signal to the environment that you are in a mating season, essentially. Number two, you need to recognize that male testosterone adapts to its environment. And our environment is saturated with BPA, microplastics, low fertility in women, which is predicated on the pill. There is some evidence to suggest, I have not found concrete evidence of yet, but I, I hear anecdotally that men's testosterone will adapt to the fertility of the women in the environment. And if they're all on the pill, meaning they are all 
they are all broadcasting to other males in their environment that they're pregnant because that's what the pill does, then your testosterone is going to drop because there's no need for testosterone to be high because you can't impregnate her twice. We're going to talk about sensory behavior, of course, soy seed oils and phytoestrogens, cortisol stress levels, all nuking testosterone. I'm gonna, I'm, I've got chapters on all of these in my book uh, that I'm developing at the moment that goes into intimate detail into why it's a particular issue, the reasoning behind it, and also the solution that you can use to start to mitigate this nerfing, this nuking of your masculine endocrinology. So the last wild theory for you guys to try here, and this again is traveling into the remits of theory, is testosterone increases relative to fertile women in proximity, okay? And also testosterone increases and androgen receptor sensitivity increases during long periods of abstinence. And there have been studies on this, this is all true. If you leave yourself alone, testosterone peaks 145% on the seventh day, it does go back down. But what they don't say is that your androgen receptors become more sensitive to the expression of testosterone. You can have high testosterone, but not be experiencing the full benefit of it if your androgen receptors are nuked. Testosterone binds to these receptors, and only when it binds does it turn on the genes that express the masculine elements that you will see, which includes pheromones, which includes muscle bulk, which includes hair follicles. Simply put, if your androgen receptors are fried, it doesn't matter how high your testosterone is, you're not going to express it. And I would hope you'd want to express it. So here's the wild theory. Be celibate for 30 days, but be in pl a close proximity to fertile women and they will jump your bones. By the way, the, I think the hard part of this is not being celibate. It's actually finding women that are signaling to the environment that they are celibate. You can hardly walk up to random strangers, random women, and go, are you on the pill or not? Because I'm conducting a personal experiment. Or maybe you can. Just remember to block any punches that come your way. And I didn't tell you anything. Anecdotally, there's a lot of stories behind this, some of which are on my channel, so you can subscribe and you can find them, and I will share more as more evidence starts to come through. But gentlemen, I hope you found this valuable. If you subscribe to anything of which I said, you can subscribe to me and I'll bring you something else very, very soon. Take care.